Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Farrakhan, proud designer work in London. In this video, I'm going to talk through a really simple way to organize your Figma file to make it really easy to collaborate with your user researchers, content designers, and engineers. I'm going to walk through some of the latest Figma updates that I leveraged to make this super simple. We're going to look at Figma branches, we're going to look at using emojis in your file names, and we're going to look at using the cover photos to make it clear the status of the project and more. Be sure to subscribe for future design related videos videos and let's get started. So diving straight into the Figma file, the first thing we can see here when it comes to organization is leveraging the cover photos and thumbnails in Figma to effectively communicate the status of your project. Really important when you're working cross-functionally with other designers, engineers, product managers, they want to be browsing in Figma and want to understand wait, what stage is this project in? Can I look at these designs and understand that the milestone one designs are ready for build and development? Are they in the wireframing stage? Has a project been frozen? Are they just going through user research? What is the status of the project before I click into this? The chances are there's gonna be hundreds of Figma files that people are gonna be going through, scrolling through, browsing through. So you wanna be able to communicate effectively a status of your project before someone's able to click on it and it makes it just easier for everyone. So here I usually use the milestone one M1 for build. At the same time, this project could be broken up into two milestones. So the milestone one designs are ready for build, but milestone two, we're still wireframing and they're going through the wireframing stage. A really simple tip, but it helps a lot not just up the designers but the rest of your cross-functional partners. So opening the Figma file let me talk through the actual structure of the page and this is a lot of interesting things that you could get some inspiration for. So to look at the left hand panel here I actually separate some of the pages out by just having blank pages to make it clear that look these these designs here are for build and they're ready for build and these ones are going to be for desktop and then underneath here are the um, milestone one search designs and they're ready similarly I do the same for mobile because they're under for build they'll these ones again are ready for build their milestone one search designs and then I use a dedicated page to separate the rest of the file. So we've got this stuff that's really ready for the engineers to build at the top here. And we use the, a green emoji here to give the status that everything in this page is ready and has been approved by all cross-functional partners. Whereas we've got a traffic light here that says that maybe this one everything isn't approved but it's still good to go there might be a few minor tweaks or changes so underneath here i use a dedicated page to separate out the rest of the file stuff that might not be as interesting or valuable for for example an engineer or product manager to see like the cover photo page or for example basic uh, in the archive some wireframes or other designs that we explored it's not something that you necessarily um, it's essential to see but it's nice to still keep in there and this is what I mainly leverage on the left hand panel and how I organize my Figma files clearly leveraging some emojis here for saying this is ready for build and then underneath here using these arrows to separate desktop and mobile designs and the reason I feel like this is effective is because when I hand off my designs desktop designs could be delivered first and then the mobile designs could be delivered two weeks later so I don't have to deliver the mobile and desktop designs at the same time and these emojis make it a lot easier for me to communicate this to people that might not have actually understood what's going on and they will see wait there's not a green tick against this one or a green emoji like the mobile designs are still pending or there's some last minute sign offs on these so I feel like it's an effective way because you're not always going to be delivering mobile and desktop designs at the same time so these might be coming at different timelines but they're going to be under the same file so it's a good way to branch this out the next thing I'm going to dive into is this search bar at the top the next thing I do to organize my Figma files really clearly to communicate the status of a project is by having this traffic light system at the top, this tab bar that states the feature name as well as the 
sign off process on each part of the design process. So research has been sorted on this, the UI has gone through like design review and design critiques and the content designers have approved this as well. And it's a really simple and effective way to help other people when they jump into fire to understand what has been approved and what hasn't. Similarly, the reason we have Milestone 2 designs here, in the same file, Milestone 1s have all been approved, whereas the content design for this might not be approved just yet, so you've got a traffic light warning here, notifying maybe one of the engineers that, wait, the copy or content could change, it hasn't been approved just yet, it might need to go for a content design review. And this makes it effective when you go into your cover photo, the Milestone 2 designs are still through the wireframe stage, and then you go into the file let them know again that look it hasn't been approved just yet really simple but effective way to communicate effectively the status of a project so the next step's a really quick one but i feel like it helps a lot in terms of organization whilst you're working directly in figma and that's adding emojis at the top of your file names which allows it to be more like a favicon when you're browsing on the web so we've got the brain emoji here for headspace on this project here we're leveraging the search so we've got a search bar emoji Previously in Figma, every single file tab at the top would have this pen icon and it would make it just a tiny bit harder to really understand what project you're actually on. When you have lots of tabs open at the same time, I can now scan and look for the emoji and I know this brain emoji one here is for the Headspace project and I could be on another project that's all about search, I've got the search emoji. It's really simple to change, all you have to do is double click and then add your emoji that you would like. So we could just change this to an E, for example, and now we've got an E at the top here. So I really recommend doing this because it just allows yourself to navigate through your projects and it allows that extra bit of organization. Quick tip, but I feel like it saves a lot of time. So the last tip we're gonna look at here is leveraging Figma branches great way to elevate your organization. We can see here we've got the main branch and then we've got a user research branch and it changes the whole instance of the file you're about to access here. So you can see effectively on the home page what branch you're looking at and you can create new branches. Here's the one we're creating for testing for video and leveraging the emoji effect. And now we're gonna create the branch and be taken directly to Figma with this new instance open. So diving into the branch that we've just created is a really effective way of organizing files and working cross-functionally. So you have these dedicated branches for research, for content, of testing different concepts that are different from your main file that you're handing off for development and it makes it a lot easier because you can have different page names in this branch. You can effectively organize this a lot more effectively for research. We can see in this file here, we've got user flow two, user flow one, and it's gonna make it easy for the researcher to test your concepts and they don't have to worry about meddling in your main file or getting anything wrong here. So once you're done with that branch, you could either archive it or you could just keep it for any future research purposes but it's really an effective way and I love using this way of working by when my researchers look into test some concepts I create them a dedicated branch to allow them to work a lot more freely we can see here the cover photo for the main file for m1 is complete and is separated Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I hope this gives you some inspiration on how to organize your Figma file. You can again grab this file by heading a link in the description below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below one of your favorite organization tips for your Figma files. Be sure to subscribe for future scenario related videos and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.